But uh, if you want to stick around, that's great. I'll answer all your burning questions the best of my abilities right now. Let's do a little Q&A. So let's jump into the Q&A. Let's see. Let me get rid of this banner. My favorite part of the, favorite part of the show. Uh, uh, uh. Bicky says I could use the ledger for sure. All right, Bicky. You could, you're in the running, man. And thank you, Bicky, for doing all, doing the reminders, like and subscribe, and reminding me to do the 10-second delay invaluable and also thanks to all the wrenches i appreciate you guys and gals for keeping things legit out there and and uh shutting off all the uh spammers let's see monster bulls got a question good question hey rob how do you set stop losses without having crypto on exchange great question and the answer is i don't because uh i don't i don't do a lot of trading as far as stop losses if you want to do that then the only way to do it actually no that's, that's not true well it is kind of true because if you don't have your crypto on exchange and you're doing some really tight stops, some stop losses, you want those to hit at a certain point. You don't want it just to go through and just break down. You can get alerts. I mean, there's many of apps out there that, that you can have them alert you to say, oh, Bitcoin just fell below, you know, 15K. And if you didn't have it on the exchange, you wouldn't be able to sell it as it goes to 14, 13, and 12. These are the risks that you take. So if you're looking to trade, that's a more of a short-term thing. I'm not that guy. There's a lot of other YouTubers out there that can help you with that. But uh, I can just tell you that uh, for me, for stop losses, I don't have them because uh, either I am, I am buying dollar cost averaging, micro dollar cost averaging, or I'm just sitting on my hands doing nothing, or I'm waiting for uh, some kind of blow off top to sell, or I sell along the way, we should say. And that's it. Let's see. Uh, Kapo Khan says, exactly, Crawfish, it's a, it's a tax deduction. The rich have many ways of not paying taxes. And of course, you're probably talking about s buying and selling art. Yeah. Some people say it's a big uh, money laundering scheme, but I mean, that's, they say a lot of things about, about crypto. They'll say a lot of things about precious metals, same type of deal here. Uh, all I know is that uh, so far, my investment in the Masterworks has done, uh, done pretty well. Has it done fantastic every single day no because it's going to be you know a multi-year type of hold and that's just how it goes but uh pretty happy with it because when something goes uh down i want something else to go up that's the whole the, the whole rationale for that if i had you know 99 percent in crypto and uh you know the crypto market went down 90 percent then that means everything i have is down pretty much 91 whatever it is percent and I'm down big time. But if I have, I'm diversified, real estate, businesses, other stocks and staking and art and degen plays, and, uh, sometimes I actually have a pretty good day. And it's, uh, it just allows me to hedge my bet. So hope that makes sense. And let's see, what else are we? Um, Shannon Miller, that's a good question. Do you think it's an opportunity for the U.S. to remain the world currency by regulating stable coins, saying that they must be backed by only U.S. dollars? It's a good point, actually. And it makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, if you want to continue to be the reserve currency, first of all, you have to find a reason for everybody to hold dollars. And if, and if everything is denominated in dollars, even with stable coins, yeah, I can definitely see that. It's a good one. Ah. Hmm. Uh, the government's always trying to do something shady. <laughs> went to went to says, Rob, should I invest in masterworks? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know your situation. That's why, like, a financial advisor will sit down and go, Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your 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 goals as far as as far as investment. Tell me your risk tolerance. Tell me what you want to see as far as your portfolio and how long of a timeline do you have? I'm here in Puerto Rico in my one of my in my mom's basement and uh, just talking to you. So I have no idea if you should invest in a Masterworks. I will say this, you can find the information on Masterworks and you can call them or email them and set up a time to talk to somebody, a real person and see if this is right for you. It's not right for everybody. I'll just be honest with you. I got three letters, pretty good. And then for everybody asking, uh, those are not birds in the background. Those are those stupid frogs here in Puerto Rico. I know everybody in Puerto Rico loves them, those cokies. Coqui, but they're annoying, especially at night. That's why I don't ever do, I don't ever do night videos. It's just that today was a, was a, 
a long day, a lot of things going on. I had a couple of interviews, put them out this weekend, but couldn't do it. Meme, hello. <laughs> Chevo. Ada is a ghost chain, Rob. Haven't you heard? I've heard. I've heard the heard the rumors. Rob, do those frog, frogs drive you crazy, or is it just how they sound? I'm like, eh, you get used to it. Charlie says, with Masterworks, how liquid is it? It is not liquid. So you have to understand, when you put the money into these, these fine pieces of art, and watch the, watch the deep dive video I did. It explains it a little bit better what I'm about to explain to you. But they have brokers, they have people that have been in the art business for you know decades, and they take a look at what are the most attractive offers and, uh, and, and what are the possibilities of selling within a reasonable time frame for a great appreciation. So you got to remember that if it's there, that means that you're there and uh, you can you can go in their secondary market and sell your shares. That's what that's all it is. It's fractionalized shares of fine art. I don't own a Banksy. I own shares of a Banksy. But again, uh, it's not a liquid. It's a long term hold. That's why I only have like it's like three to five percent of my my whole portfolio. It's not that much. And that's why I'm, I always say diversify. Like who's going to go in all in on a Banksy? Come on. That's that's ridiculous. Stonebook, she'll fold you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ken Bruce says, stop losses, stop you from making profit. Eh. Logan used leverage. You got to tell me how to do that. Ballsy. I, I just can't, I can't do it. That just scares the hell out of me. Uh, but some people are braver than me. Rob, should I buy a Monet? Uh, you could. I guess the price is right and it's a real Monet. Chances are... Uh, you don't have a, you know, twenty million dollars, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. I can use another ledger for a backup. Yeah, I got like three or four. They're great. I like the uh, the X. Mm, how do I know the giveaway? It's gonna go through. Watch the video, retweet, and stuff like that, and then I'll do a random drawing because I don't like to say this is the winner, and then people say, "Rob, you that was uh, that was rigged." I say, of course it was. So I just do a random drawing on Twitter. And there's a there's a there's a an app called Twitter Picker that I use, and it just kind of just verifies and spits it out. Oh, Robin, how do you feel about the conspiracy theories regarding friends of the show, Gary? I gotta say, it wouldn't surprise me to hear that there was some master plot to set to destroy crypto. So, not that I like to spread rumors. But sometimes I do because let's be honest, everybody likes a little a little rumor mill, a little cheese me. Why not? So I'll just I'll play the game. So the game is that uh, there was a report that Gary Gensler, friend of the show, watched the show all the time, little Gary, that he actually uh, sat down with uh, Sam Bakeman Fried. He also uh, either his boss or his his compatriot or his coworker at MIT was, uh, I believe it's either Sam's dad or, or one of Sam's, Sam Bakeman Freed's uh, relatives. And then uh, Sam's mom was, was a big donor to, and an organizer uh, for politicians, mostly on the uh, Democratic side, I think maybe exclusively on the Democratic side. So what it looked like is that Sam was just a patsy and he was set up to succeed. Uh, so he could ultimately fail and bring everything down. I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes I just think that that's kind of an elaborate plan for for a lot of things to happen. Could it happen? Sure. Why not? Are aliens real? Sure. I don't know. Uh, could this be a thing? Maybe. But uh, I can't change it and I can't verify it. All I can tell you is that these are the things that I can and can't change. I can change how I diversify. I can change how I invest. I can change how much research and uh, things that I do to get my head right for uh, the upcoming uh, prolonged bear market and recession. Those are the things that I can change. Things that I can't change is you know, how we all got here and what actually happened. Really, I don't really care too much, honestly. I just uh, put my head down and keep uh, moving forward as best I can. <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> Human trafficking to the sale and auction of art is also real. That is true, um, I suppose. It's also true for any type of commodity that you can possibly think of. 
and can do. I mean, I believe that uh, some people have used crypto for illicit activities. Not that that's all it does, but that makes a lot of sense. Also, precious metals, gold and silver, uh, you know, cartels use that as well. And that also entails with human trafficking. So I see your point, I guess. Let's see. Noah says, as a member of the class 21, I got to say this is the most excited I've been. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, right now, I think this is, um, I can't say it's a good time to be in here. It's an interesting time. And uh, I think we have some more downside. I do. Just with the contagion, because the things that we don't know. It's the, it's what we don't know is the one that really hurt us. What we think we know, I mean, possibly could be, could be fine. But I mean, let's be honest. If crypto hasn't crashed, for everything that, that's happened so far, I mean, crash like Bitcoin below 10K, uh, total market cap below 400 billion. If it hasn't gone below that from all this that just happened, might not happen if it's contained to what we know right now. And that's the thing. Smart individuals will always say, well, you know, bottom is in, it's going to be fine. We're going to go sideways, maybe go up and... You know, but then there's a lot of things that people just don't know. And uh, I think there's so many things that we don't know with this contagion and what it comes out to. I mean, it's the same thing like when Celsius went down. Did anybody think that, uh, you know, this would happen? That it was all, <laughs> it was all interconnected and things were being, uh, it was just exchanges moving crypto from one to the next to gain more yield, AKA the circle J. Who knew? That's why uh, I just diversify as best as I can. Nick says, Nick, how should we buy crypto if we're afraid to put limits on exchanges, especially now when it could be a knife day and hour? It's up to... The question that I think you have to ask yourself, is this the right time to buy for me? Right? Because right now, even if you bought Bitcoin... What are we at, 17K? What's to say it doesn't go to, to 13K or 12K? I don't think anything that we buy right now has a tremendous possibility of fat, huge gains. I think you have to be delusional to think that uh, this is just going to play off and have no problems. So, Nick, I got to ask you, is this is a good time for you to really buy. Or maybe it's an opportunity just to sit on your hands and do nothing for a while and just sit on cash. That's that's my question back to you. Yeah, the frogs. I got to get out of here. Yeah, stupid cokey frogs. Huh. Well, James, you should probably go check out James because I usually don't stream this late. I got to, usually it's, had to do a couple of things. Chewy had to go to the vet. Gets uh, immunotherapy. But everything's good now. And then, of course, the interviews and then had to do something with the real estate stuff. And then, of course, and also one of the things that, that's great about owning real estate is that you're the boss. So if your cleaning crew doesn't show up, guess who's cleaning? You are. And that was me and me and the wife today. Went to uh, the other condo down in Condado and had to clean everything for the next group to come in from Airbnb. But eh, what are you going to do? <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> NATO could do nothing, probably because of those missile launches, I assume. Hmm. I think we're coming to the cut of crypto. March 2024, I'm a free bird. Puerto Rico, here I come. Very nice. Thank you for showing up. Thanks for listening. And thanks for not just going, ah, Rob doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm just going to leave everything on exchanges. I have gotten so many messages now about the FTX. Ah, it's nice. It's nice to, to hear, you know, because let's be honest. I warned you guys too late in Celsius. I did. I gave you nine hours heads up. That's uh, unacceptable. Voyager, at least I gave you two weeks to figure that out, right? And then, of course, this one I gave you four months. So, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the... Rob, should I buy portion? Sam knew what he's doing. I believe he does. It's, you don't, 
Sam's not a dumb guy, but Sam got a little reckless. And that's just it. Like, I just don't understand. Like, it's if you just do the right things at the right time with the right people, you can have a prolonged, massive business for and and, and just a, a tremendous amount of time. Just do the same thing. Like with exchanges, they were making a lot of money just by the uh, exchange fees, whether that be 0.2% or something like Coinbase 1, 1. whatever it is, uh, 1.5%. You're making a great amount of money, but it just seems like it just becomes like a one-upsmanship. Like, okay, well, you got yield at you know 0.5%, well, I'll do 3%. You do 3%, I'll do 6%. You do loans, well, I'll do loans and I'll only do half the collateral. Hell, I don't even do any of the collateral. They just would have, if they just would have slowed down, I think they, a lot of this stuff wouldn't have happened. And here's the next question for everybody. Where do you think we would be with the CPI numbers that just came out not too long ago and the Fed coming out and going, okay, we'll save five basis points. And then we see some earnings that are actually quite positive. And then we see that uh, this the, the PPI came out with the numbers that are cooled. Where do you think we'd be right now in crypto? Do you think we'd be over 20K for Bitcoin? Do you think we'd be over a trillion dollars right now? If everything was kosher and we were good in all the exchanges, I think we'd be doing pretty damn good. I think all the people that did say that uh, the bottom was in in June were pro would probably would have been right. Just saying. I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. I could be wrong. Uh, Colorado. I feel good. My voice is a little hoarse for some reason. I'm not for sure why. Ever since that meetup, I should have drank more. I didn't really drink at all, actually. Uh, interesting. Crypto Ricardo says, bonjour. Rob, I also believe this time will not be different, which means the 18 and a half year economic cycle is still in play. What is your take on the cycle? So if we're talking about the fourth turning, then I do not want to scare everybody. So I'm just going to have everybody do a Google search for economic cycle, fourth turning, like turn the key, T-U-R-N-I-N-G. And uh, you can shard yourself silly uh, by looking at that. <laughs> How do you deal with those frogs? You get used to it. That's right. And, you know, I'm in a, you know, a separate room and everything's closed off. And you can still hear those things. So Paul's got a good question. Not a dumb question, Paul. Would it be possible to have a hard wallet that we could put USD on and buy Bitcoin through the wallet directly, not using stable? There's a way to use that in Ledger. And depends on your region that you're at. You can uh, connect with, I think it's called MoonPay. But the percentage, I think, is pretty high, 4%. However, think of it this way. Everybody was bitching and complaining about Coinbase's high fees. And they were saying FTX was so cheap. Now that we're here... Now that we're here, who, who that had their crypto on FTX would then say, oh, well, you know what? The 1.5% was a little bit too much. I think everybody right now who was paying that 0.1% or whatever it was for the fees would gladly have paid the 1.5, 3 4% just to have their funds safe still. Just guessing. So um, there's an option in Ledger, and depends on your region, you have to check that out. <sighs> Sam says, what if crypto drops enough that Celsius and Voyager no longer have a balance sheet hole? So there's a problem with, there's a big problem with Voyager. And we talked about this a couple of days ago. This was actually, no, this was on Saturday when I had, uh, when I talked to Simon Dixon. The Voyager UCC, uh, which is the group of lawyers and the people that kind of oversee the uh, Chapter 11 uh, for the um, investor committee. They had a Twitter spaces, and one of the lawyers was talking to everybody, and they said, you don't understand, and you can find this on Simon Dixon's uh, channel. It's like two minutes long, and he says, you don't understand. With Voyager, they can't come back because a lot of things they were doing were illegal, they didn't have uh, the right certification, the right titles, the right licenses to operate in certain states. So if they just came back, there was a kind of reorganization, each one of these states would just come right back at them. And then you'd have just be attacked from all sides. 
And uh, that was happening with uh, Voyager. It was happening with Celsius. And they just shrugged it off like it was no big deal. Like, yeah, we'll get past it. But there's a reason why, you know, like Gemini can operate in New York. There's a reason why Kraken is, is still around and a reason why Coinbase is still around in the U.S. It's because they pay attention to the regulars and go, well, we want to play ball. So we want to do all these step of the hoops, even though you guys give us junk guidance. But here we are. So to answer your question, uh, people in Voyager and Celsius may get things back, but it, I think it'll be more for like a liquidation. But again, I'm not a chapter. I'm not a bankruptcy lawyer. Obvious, obviously. Uh, <laughs> probably saying the same thing when he, when Bitcoin gets to 5K. Nah. At 5K, I think I would say, okay, guys, maybe the bottom's in. But I would still DCA because I don't know. Uh, please like and subscribe. James James M says companies don't seem eager to say how deep they were invested in. Would you? That's like the kiss of death, James. And it's a good point you bring up. But I'm telling you, if I was a company and I didn't want to have a run in the bank or my investors or the people who capitalize my business or any kind of loan department, I wouldn't say a peep about FTX. Like, man, I hope nobody figures out this and just go from there. So, yeah, they're not going to say anything. Why would they? They get Then it gets scrutinized and then that's it. Uh, let's see. Richard Hart named the next big crypto entity that he, he thought the contagion would take down. But I forgot the company. He was on crypto banter a day ago. Well, that's interesting. I'll have to check that out. Ah, Colorado Crypto G. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Jeff, finally caught a live one without working at the construction site in Florida. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, EJ Mo's got a good point. Tell me if this is wrong. This makes sense. The rumor is exchanges with their own tokens are most likely to be insolvent due to the fact that they can manipulate their token prices. Also, they can, and you have to remember, this is what FTX did. They took the FTT token and used that as collateral, even though they create out of thin air, which is essentially what the government does, but it's the government. So what are you going to do? So if you think about it, like um, OKB, OKX, they have their own. Uh, Crypto.com has their own. Eh, Binance has their own, but I mean, people actually use Binance coin for, for actual, you know, real on-chain stuff. And then uh, yeah, a couple other ones. But yeah, I would, you know, it's a funny thing. Everybody was calling for crypto.com to, to collapse. We're still here. And the CEO just came out today and said, hey, everybody who's talking about it and uh, I'll be uh, running the bank. Well, we're still here and we're still solvent. So keep coming. And I was like, that's, that's pretty good. If they can come to this, man, that's pretty good. I still wouldn't, but I would still say, even if they do come to this, what do we say? Everything's a scam. Don't invest money you can lose. Take everything off the exchanges, nothing on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. Those are the rules, right? Those are the rules. The rules right there. Hello, Dan. These rules right here. Da -da 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 -da. That's it. Ah. Where are we here? Ah, this one. Ripple and Charles, what's the issue there? Nah, Charles was just ticked off that uh, he talked about some something with Hinneman and, and the uh, conspiracy that was going on and just said that it wasn't a conspiracy. Something like that. Don't quote me. And then everybody blew up at uh, Charles Hostetum. Not for sure. <laughs> Give Chewy some DHEA. She doesn't need that. Let's see. Chris Bung, Chris Brunger. Why do centralized exchanges have their own tokens? Because it was a really easy way to print money. That's why. SBF, SBF, Sam Bank of Freedom, abused this by printing FTT and using it as collateral. Look, I thought it was not a bad idea until it went out of control, right? 
I always took a look at it as like, like reward points, right? Like, uh, you know, you use a credit card, you get reward points for your flights or how many flights, uh, miles that you use, you get certain points, you can use it on your credit card. So I thought, okay, well, if I have uh, a certain token and uh, I get more of a yield or I get less fees for all my, uh, you know, crypto transactions, sure, I'll buy those points. That's essentially what I thought it was. I thought I, I, I felt they had the most use. Unfortunately, they started to use that as, hey, we're going to take loans out against this. We're going to collateralize this and it's going to be no big deal. And it was a big deal. Colorado, get to bed. It's late. Uh, what's next to, what's next to crash? I thought it was crypto.com, honestly, but I was wrong. Still in the running. Yeah, where is guitar playing? Well, remember, it's very late what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah. I watched Rob during the Voyager when I still had to learn the hard way. Yeah, it's the best way to learn. Look, even, even me, I learned the hard way, and I... Remember, I was talking about um, self custody. I said, ah, you know, I give the example. Well, you got a single mom, three kids, and two jobs. It's kind of hard to learn this stuff. And of course, now that single mom with three kids and two jobs, she may have lost everything. So I don't say that anymore. Now I just say, look, it's going to take you probably 30 minutes to learn how to do it. Just go to Dan Teaches Crypto, the second module, safety. And it shows you exactly how to do it. There's like four videos. It's super simple. Get up. Did you see Kevin O'Leary on Crypto Banner saying he would still invest in a future SBF project? Huh. I'm going to watch that. If that's true. That can't be true, Darth Mike. That cannot be true. That's, that's got to be hearsay. Or just ridiculousness. One thing I will say is that uh, for all these business experts, you know, Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary, for as much due diligence and research that he probably did in his team, they still didn't catch it. And uh, CZ Binance had, had their books for 24 hours and said, nope, this is nonsense. Yes, CTO Larson does always have great content. And not only does he have great content, he does great videos themselves. Very uh, uh, artistically done i would say uh and welcome service tech is a new member thank you thoughts on aaron's mia culpa video today aaron bennett or who i'm not, I'm not sure you know what i'm talking about oh yeah tom wayne said rob bennett had a great interview with mark yusko if you had a chance i was listening to it right now actually before i did this video and it was great there was, uh, I did two videos on Mark Yusko. One, I got it wrong and I was, I messed this up, but uh, Mark Yusko, he is the Bridgewater Capital or something like that. And uh, I'm probably getting that wrong. Let me find it before I make another mistake. Morgan Creek Capital, excuse me. And a uh, smart guy, and I like him. Here he is, Mark Yusko. And there was two videos I did. One I got wrong where <clears throat> Mark was doing predictions about where Bitcoin would be. And I thought he was talking about 2023 for some reason. He said Bitcoin would get to 250K, maybe 200K. And I was like, there's no way. And then I had to go back and re-listen to the video, and he didn't. He said, no, no, no. It's going to be 200K possibly in 2024, 2025. And I'm like, okay, that seems more reason realistic. He was on Ben's channel. You guys should check it out. It's a really good interview. Smart guy, really has it uh, dialed in about what he's talking about. And he talks about where we are. And he now believes that the bottom is in. He's like, well, I did call the bottom in June, but we didn't understand about the fraud thing. And But I get where he's coming from in this one. I, it was a great interview. So definitely check that one out. 25K, man, work. Old Bear agreed. Lori, I calculate 20,500 December 21st. December 1st. I hope you're right. December 1st, 2025, maybe. SPF. <laughs> SPF was indeed a Muppet. Question, if FTX sold fake Bitcoin, is that possible? No. 
would they show up in a blind? No, it doesn't work like that. And that's the one way you would prove it's fake. Like, hey, I just sent you some Bitcoin. No, you didn't. What's what's the hash? What's the transaction ID? And you can go to you know, any kind of Bitcoin reader and it'll show you. Uh, <laughs> Rob, do you have a hamster in the back? No, it's these stupid cokey frogs. Which that's it, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it with this. This is a great question, future millionaire. How did FTX get approved to take over Voyager when they themselves were bankrupt? Did, don't they have people for that? It's probably the same people that uh, took a look at 3AC's, 3AC Capital and said, how much do you have uh, for collateral? And, oh, we have a billion dollars. Well, let me see it. And it was a written out piece of paper. I have $1 billion. I think it was in crayon. That's it for today. So look, everybody, thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. It's over an hour. So uh, thank you. Uh, I do appreciate all the things that you guys do. But that's it for tonight. So if you like today's video or learned something, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and that's it. So thanks so much, and I will see you guys on the next one. Have a great night. Adios.